This is breaking news from RTV6, working for you. We talked about how this day was supposed to go, but I can't stand here with him because he was taken away from me. Today, the mother of Drajon Reed is taking legal action. It's the first lawsuit filed in connection to the police shooting death of her son. Today would have marked Drajon Reed's 22nd birthday. That Indianapolis man was shot and killed following a chase with Metro Police back on May 6th. Today, Reed's mother filed a lawsuit in federal court targeting the city, IMPD, Police Chief Randall Taylor, Deputy Chief Kendall Adams, and the two officers, Jajor Mercer and Stephen Scott. The complaint claims the city failed to train and supervise its officers. The 19-page document also says IMPD failed to implement policies to protect Reed's constitutional rights. Police say during a foot pursuit, they attempted to stop Reed with a taser, which failed. They say they shot at Reed after he shot at police twice. The attorney for Reed's mother said the evidence that they've seen shows the opposite. And we will not allow a police department to reverse engineer their facts to justify this to make it a good shoot after the fact. The investigation of Reed's death now focuses on an investigation from a court-appointed special prosecutor. The prosecutor has called on state police to assist in looking into what happened. As Dre John Reed's family says it's waiting for answers from the city, the mayor says he's taking steps to reform the criminal justice system. Mayor Joe Hogsett says the city will partner with the School of Criminal Law at New York University. The school will study the city and gather input from the community. And the mayor says it will take a, be a deep dive into what's leading into racial disparities in policing as well as in health, education, and housing. Some who have been protesting police brutality for the last few weeks hope the study will lead to a public safety system where sending a police officer isn't the default answer for a call for help. Minneapolis, you know, who was at the epicenter of the George Floyd incident, they've already begun that process and they've already started the process of saying, hey, we need community members who are trained, informed, and well aware of what's going on to respond to these crises so that we can start to rely less on police. Well, the mayor says findings from the study will be used to hold law enforcement and city agencies accountable. He says those agencies will also be held to a standard that's defined by the community. We do want to take a turn right now to our forecast. It is Tuesday. We've had a great few, past few days of weather, Todd, here in the Circle City and around central Indiana. What can we expect as people are getting outside for their lunch hour? And you know, more of the same, Lauren, we still have the sunshine, the humidity remains low, and our temperatures are very, very comfortable. Take a look at your noontime temperatures across the area. Everybody's in the 70s, with the exception of Muncie, which is sitting at 80 degrees, but it's 77 in India, as well as Bloomington. 75 is the current temperature right now over in Greenfield, as well as the Richmond area. And to go with the uh, nice temperatures, look at all that blue sky. Just a few fair weather clouds out there, and that is just about it. And that's going to basically be our view here here throughout the afternoon hours and a significant cloud cover still well off to our southwest and you see it here trying to back into the area from east off to the west but it's not going to be very successful it's going to run into a lot of dry air so as we go forward in this forecast we'll warm a couple more degrees for your afternoon highs we'll get them into the low 80s here this afternoon we're just a light breeze and then once the sun sets we'll cool off into the 70s pretty quickly enjoy today because the temperatures start to climb again tomorrow and the humidity comes way up by the end of the week. We'll talk more about that, Lauren, in your full forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you. In addition to Indianapolis, police reform is the talk of the country right now. Down in Atlanta, a candlelight vigil was held last night and more demonstrations are in the works after the shooting death of a black man by a police officer. ABC's Trevor Alt tells us the fallout comes as President Trump is signing some minor changes to police enforcement at this hour. Authorities in Atlanta have now released the 911 calls from a Wendy's parking lot where Rayshard Brooks was shot and killed by police Friday night. I have a car. I think he's intoxicated. He's in the middle of my drive through Police body and dash cam footage captured the incident. Brooks struggling as officers tried to arrest him for suspicion of drunk driving, running away and appearing to point a stun gun at police when Officer Garrett Rolfe opens fire, killing him with two shots to the back. Brooks' death sparking days of protests in Atlanta. The district attorney is expected to announce if there will be charges in the next few days. The Brooks family is calling for the officers involved to be arrested. The trust 
that we have with the police force is broken. And the only way to heal some of these wounds is through a conviction and a drastic change with the police department. The city fired Officer Rolf on Saturday, and Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms is announcing a new list of police reforms. She's requiring officers to use de-escalation methods before turning to deadly force. It is clear that we do not have another day, another minute, another hour to waste. Today, President Trump signing an executive order that while stopping short of radical change, calls on police departments to adopt best practices of use of force and create a database to track police misconduct and encourages departments to use social workers on some nonviolent calls. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Atlanta. Well, for the first time since 2003, federal executions will resume, and they're going to do so right here in Indiana. The Justice Department has set execution dates starting in mid-July for four death row inmates being held in federal prison here in Terre Haute. All four have been convicted of murder, including the killings of children. The move comes after a month-long legal battle over the matter. The government's initial plan for the executions to resume last December was put on hold by a federal appeals court. Attorney General William Barr says the convicted killers whose execution our plan have all had fair legal proceedings leading up to this decision. Several states that reopened early are now seeing a spike in COVID-19 cases. Up next, whether Indiana is at risk for a rise in the number of cases and the steps being taken to avoid it. Well, he was in town to open a new school in his hometown. And with everything that's going on in the world, this NBA star isn't so sure it's the time for players to get back out on the court once again. Todd. And Lauren, it's an absolutely perfect afternoon for us here for the middle of June with the sun shining, the low humidity, the light winds, and very comfortable temperatures. Here's a live look in Bloomington right now, and you see just a few fair weather clouds out there, and that is it. That's going to continue into this afternoon. We'll talk about that and look ahead to the rest of the work week, which does include some changes heading our way. It's all in your Storm Team 6 forecast when the news at noon continues right here on RTV6. Case of Homes, every Sunday morning at 1130. Welcome back. The number of new COVID-19 cases in Indiana continues to rise, though not as quickly as other states. Today, the state health department reporting another 14 deaths. That gives Indiana 2,265 coronavirus deaths so far. Another 440 COVID-19 cases were reported as well. The state says it has plenty of hospital capacity right now, with more than 40% of the intensive care beds still available. But some parts of the country are moving ahead with the reopening plans, despite some big increases in the rate of coronavirus cases. As of now, Indiana is not seeing a COVID spike like ones in Florida, Arizona, and Texas. And our Kelsey Anderson tells us what experts are saying and how a spike in cases could potentially impact small businesses. Yeah, we haven't seen that spike and some experts say that could be because we opened at a slower and more data-driven pace than other states across the country. But experts say a spike could still be on the way, especially when we hit the final stage of reopening in July. Shandy Durth with IU Fairbanks School of Public Health says it's something they are going to have to keep a close eye on. And hopefully, like I said, if we were to see an increase, some other measures would be taken to encourage more social distancing moving forward because we don't want to get back to the same spot we were in back in March. Epidemiologists say right now the best thing you can do to help prevent a spike is wear a mask and avoid large gatherings when you can. We did reach out to the governor's office to see if there's anything they are doing to prepare for a potential spike in COVID-19 cases, but this morning we have not heard back from them yet. I'm Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. Well, it could be a safer way to shop during the pandemic, but it could also lead to fewer jobs at Walmart. Walmart says it's testing out only offering self-checkouts at some stores. Walmart says it has two goals. They want to see if it speeds up the checkout process, and they want to make shopping safer for both customers and employees by limiting interactions. So far, Walmart has not said whether it's cutting cashier jobs at those self-checkout stores. Well, the dice are out and the slots are rolling once again. Up next, how Indiana's casinos are back in business and how they'll look a little different in the COVID-19 era. And let's take a live look outside right now, overlooking the Circle City, those clear blue skies. A great day here for this Tuesday and we'll get the full forecast from Todd Clausen coming up right here on the News at Noon. Stay with us. Hundred 
850-5054. Welcome back. Indiana's casinos are open once again, and they've been closed by the order of the, governor, of the governor since the pandemic began. That was all the way back in March. So there have been some concerns over how casinos could operate safely with people continuously touching the slot machines, the cards, and the money. Our Brad Brown shows us what's changed to help protect gamblers, dealers, and everyone in between. For the past 12 weeks, Indiana's casinos have sat empty. But on Monday morning, the sounds of gambling were alive and well. In Anderson, a steady crowd was already in the door at 9 a.m. as Harris Hoosier Park is getting back in business. Plenty of noticeable changes at every angle. Upon walking in, guests go through a temperature sensor during their ID check. Anyone with a fever will be sent away. Social distancing markers keep reminders of staying six feet apart. Casinos are capped at 50% capacity. That means chairs only set up at every third or fourth machine, and many of the consoles are simply out of service for now. At the table games, Caesars Gaming has all of their staff wearing face masks, extra sanitizing of chips, cards, chairs, and tables, and at a short glance, slightly more than half the customers wearing masks as well. And they're off. Over in Shelbyville, it's the first day of the horse racing schedule at Indiana Grand. Thoroughbreds on the track for the first time, more than two months behind schedule. No fans in the stands, that will be the case until at least July 4th. It could also give a bit of a boost to Indiana's sports betting numbers. Tens of millions of dollars in revenue have disappeared with no major sports over the past three months. Outside Indiana Grand, the line to get in reached 50 deep by mid-afternoon. More than 20 minutes wait to get in with the same temperature checks in place. Once inside, customers will see limits put on the number of players that can sit at certain games. Blackjack and other card games like Baccarat and three-card poker have only three seats available. Four players max at the roulette tables, and only six can work the rail at craps, all to keep social distancing in place. Players are not required to wear masks, but casinos in other states have implemented this rule. It's clear that there is some pent-up demand among gamblers in central Indiana. How much they're willing to spend? That remains to be seen. But for Indiana's casinos, any play is better than no play at all. Working for you, Brad Brown, RTV6. All right, Brad, thank you. Well, both casinos will be open 24 hours at this time. Horse racing begins in Anderson today. Both facilities have limited dining options right now. Well, we do want to get a check of our forecast right now. Maybe your Tuesday plans take you outdoors, maybe just for a walk to get out and enjoy the great weather. Todd, what can we expect for the rest of the afternoon? You know, basically all that's going to happen this afternoon, Lauren, is the temperature is going to go up a couple more degrees, and that's just about it. We're going to keep the sunshine. We're going to keep the humidity low, and the winds are going to be fairly light as well. So here are your weather headlines going forward. Plenty of sunshine not only today, but in the coming days as well. In fact, we don't have any rain in the forecast until Saturday. The humidity is low today and tomorrow, but as the heat builds late in the week, so will the humidity once again. But perfect for any outdoor activities, whether that's at the pool, with the, the beach ball or maybe just a walk or a run through the neighborhood, you're in great shape. But notice the temperature trend over the next few days. We'll stay above the average high of 82 degrees and we'll see high temperatures by, if not Friday, most likely on Saturday, get very close to that 90 degree mark. And with the humidity or the heat building and rather the humidity will start to climb as well. I know you see ups and downs there as far as uh, the humidity goes on the humidity meter. Uh, humidity is always going to be higher in the morning hours because the temperatures are cooler compared to the afternoon. So that's why you see that up and down, but focus on more the trend and the direction that that line is heading. And it's getting us up into the humid to very humid category as we push through the weekend. A live look in Bloomington right now, just a few fair weather clouds. And that is just about it. As you look across the hills there of Monroe County, 77 degrees in Bloomington, as well as Indianapolis, 80 is the current temperature up in a Muncie. And as we go forward throughout the day today, Today. Our high temperatures, they are going to top off right around 82 degrees. So we'll go up another five degrees for your afternoon high. And that should be just about it. But obviously very, very pleasant for the middle of June. And then as we work our way throughout the next couple hours, you may notice a little more in the way of a cloud cover building in. But it's just going to be those high cumulus clouds. There is a pretty big storm system that is just off to our southwest. I'm bringing a lot, a lot of rainfall to North Carolina. And it's trying to throw some clouds.
clouds here in our direction, but it's running into a lot, a lot of dry air. And so with the exception of some clouds here and there, uh, we are going to be in great shape this afternoon. Sunset is at 915. We'll cool off into the 70s as the sun sets. And then overnight tonight, open up the windows. Once again, it's really, really comfortable. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s overnight. Tomorrow, partly cloudy skies up to 84 to 86 degrees for your high temperature. So it is going to be a little bit warmer. But as you look at your seven day planning forecast, notice once we get to Friday and Saturday, the 90s jump out at you. The humidity, it comes up. It's not going to be super, super oppressive, but with the temperatures in the 90s, it's going to be, especially during the peak heating of the day, rather uncomfortable to be out and about. Then the rain chances return Saturday. It's probably just a stray storm on Saturday. Better storm chances on Sunday and Monday, uh, but nothing to cancel plans over. There's going to be kind of the garden variety uh, thunderstorms during the typical summer months. And Saturday also, by the way, Lauren, the summer solstice. Summer officially arrives uh, all across uh, the world at different times, obviously. Uh, but from that point, on officially summer, although it feels like summer here already across the area. It sure does, Todd. Thank you so much. Well, an NBA star and indie native, George Hill, he's giving back. The former Indiana Pacer is helping to launch a new school for the arts on the Near East Side called Him by Her. So that stands for Helping Improve Mankind by Healing Every Race. And we can tell you that the Him by Her Foundation offers social and health services with the goal of addressing racial and economic disparities. Sports director Dave First caught up with George Hill and asked him about the current plans for the NBA to resume games. My biggest thing is I'm human first. Um, coach Jordan from Butler, the head coach, said it About, best. Yeah. Um, he said before, before I'm a coach, um, I'm a father. Before I'm a coach, I'm a husband. And that's the same for me. Before I'm a player, I'm a, I'm a man. There's so much in this world that's going on that's negative. Uh, to be worried about a basketball game. So I'm a firm believer of that. You know, players may think differently, um, but if they're ready to throw this ball up in the air, my competitive side will kick right in. Uh, but I know there's more to life that we need to focus on than playing a ball. There are some that would say that you guys getting back to basketball and playing might amplify the opportunity for you guys to talk about this. I think playing personally, and this is just my opinion, um, playing Getting back to basketball just puts a Band-Aid on it. It pushes it off to the side to leave us to talk about it another day. Well, the Him by Her Foundation was co-founded by retired IMPD detective Harry Dunn and his wife Michelle. They're trying to raise $10 million to help fund this new charter school. When we come back here, it is time for our pet of the week. I want to introduce you to Kiyoki. A lot of people looking for a furry friend to keep them company during quarantine. We'll teach you a little bit about this guy and let you know how you can make him part of your family. That's just after the break. Stay with us. Slash first responders first. Welcome back. Tuesday is our pet of the week day here on the news at noon. And so today we want you to introduce you to Kiyoki. He's a handsome three-year-old cat who was transferred to Indy Humane from Indianapolis Animal Care Services in need of an emergency medical treatment. Kiyoki had expensive surgery to relieve a painful bladder condition, but his surgery, it all went well. He's now resting at a foster home. He's free from pain, finally living his best life. Kiyoki loves belly rubs, catnip, looking out the window and watching bird videos. He'll follow people around the home, but he's also fairly independent. Kiyoki's adoption fee is just $50. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Kiyoki or set up an appointment to meet him, just go to IndieHumane.org. Very cute there. All right, Todd, as people are heading out, maybe taking the dog on a walk this afternoon, what can they expect? You know, great weather, Lauren, do whatever you want to do outside, walk the dog, just take yourself for a walk, a bike ride, a jog, uh, maybe just go sit in a park and read a book. The weather will be absolutely terrific. 82 with sunny skies, low humidity, just a bit of a breeze. Tomorrow a little bit warmer, 86, but the humidity still remains low, and then it starts to creep up as the temperatures creep up as well, heading into Friday and Saturday. It should be in the 90s. It'll be our first taste of 90 degree weather across parts of the area heading into the weekend. Saturday, just the chance of a spot storm. More. Todd, thanks. And thank you for joining us and making RTV6 your choice for news. We'll see you back here at the news at 5. Have a great Tuesday.